he was also dreaming of her. She is just 13 years old. In 2013, when she was five, the Voting Rights Act was gutted by a Supreme Court decision that said states with a history of racist voter suppression didn't need oversight anymore because racism was a thing of the past. In 2021, when she was 12, the Supreme Court toppled the rest of the Voting Rights Act and her home state passed laws that make it even harder for black and brown Georgians to vote. Today, Yolanda and her peers, children of just 13, have fewer voting rights than the day they were born. What would MLK say about that? Is that the dream that he held for his granddaughter? I asked Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema and all those who stand in the way of restoring voting rights, is that the legacy that you want to leave behind? Many have chosen that path before you, and there are stains on our country's history. After the Civil War ended in 1865, do you know how long it took our country to come together and overcome our disease of division to get it passed? 100 years. 100 years of filibustered civil rights laws. 100 years of Jim Crow. 100 years of poll taxes and impossible tests for black voters. 100 years of being so intimidated at polling places that many felt safer staying at home. If Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema maintain their, their position, they will extend white supremacy's short chokehold on our democracy and consign themselves to the same foolish legacy. Do they want us to wait another hundred years to have our rights restored? Is that the beloved community of Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King? If so, tell it to the grandmother in West Virginia who waits hours to vote, only to find out she's been kicked off the voter polls and it's too late to do anything about it. Tell it to the elderly native man on a reservation in Arizona who will have to travel 20 miles to vote even though he doesn't have access to transportation. Tell it to the mother who will wait 10 hours to vote in Atlanta with her children by her side and her bag full of water and snacks because it's illegal to pass out food and water to voters. But we can't stop now because we've seen what President Biden and Senate Democrats can do when they commit. They delivered a historic bill that will improve our country's infrastructure, and that has me thinking about bridges. Bridges take you somewhere new and help you cross impassable terrain. This morning, as we walked in the rain and snow across the Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge with our Peace Walk partners and the DC MLK Holiday Committee, and as I crossed, I thought about John Lewis and C.T. Vivian and Hosea Williams and Amelia Boynton. When John Lewis and those marchers crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma in 1965, they were trying to lead us from the scorched earth of oppression to the solid foot footing of freedom. Today, our nation stands on another bridge and another dangerous threat waits on the other side. But we must not allow it to turn us back. If, as we believe we are our ancestors' answered prayers, we must ensure that our descendants become ours. We do that by linking arms and forging ahead across the bridge of democracy to claim the future for all Americans. I'm reminded of a poem by Langston Hughes, a poem that my father-in-law recited to the students of Barrett Junior High School in October 1967. The poem is called Mother to Son, and in it I can hear all of those who marched before us, all of the years of prayers of our ancestors fortifying us now. Well, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it, and splinters, and boards torn up, and places with no carpet on the floor, bare. But all the time I'm climbing on, and reaching landings and turning corners, and sometimes going in the dark. 
where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on those steps because you find it's kind of hard. Don't you fall now, for I'm still going, honey. I'm still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. As in that poem, life for many black and brown Americans has been no crystal stair. And we will not allow our elected officials to add to the tax and splinters while we climb. As my father-in-law, Dr. King, told those young people that day, you have a responsibility to seek to make your nation a better nation wish to live and to seek to make life better for everyone. He urged them to seek beauty and truth. If he were here today, he would look our leaders in the eye and challenge them with those same words. History hinges on the choices they will make. The tones of democracy ring louder than division. Freedom and justice for all. And no matter what it looks like, no matter how tired we may be, we will not give up. We will not give out. We will not give in. Whether this bill is passed tomorrow, next week, next month, or next year, and we already know what the end will be. Because God always ends on all is well. And until all is well, it's not the end. Thank you very much.